everybody and welcome to First Ring Daily. Today's show is brought to you by Smart Deploy, hardware independent imaging software for 50 to 50,000 users. How's it going, Paul? It's going pretty well. I'm kind of recovering it, from yesterday's spaz attack. Yeah, it's been kind of a busy week. Yeah, you know, um, I I was thinking Microsoft has not Oh, I drugged that to the wrong screen. We are a technology show here, folks. I like that you used the non uh, drug, by the way. Yes. <laughs> uh, I wish Microsoft would only have announced five more things this week. Yeah, because and maybe like one more database product, you know? It's been a few weeks. Yeah, they announced Cosmos DB. Um, maybe maybe we can get some Galactic DB or something. Uh, I don't know what yeah. supersedes Cosmos DB, but um, I'm sure they could tell us. How are you doing, Brad? Curious. You know, well, we had a little for those watching the pre-show calamity. Um, very. This is this is the problem that I have sometimes with updates. So we use a service often called vmixcall.com, and when I open Firefox to log in to that good stuff right before the show, it says, hey, your version of Firefox has been updated. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yep. The problem is, is that completely broke vmix call for us. So Hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. But um, speaking of Firefox and browsers, and look at this segue, Paul. How's Edge working out for you on the phone? <laughs> well, um, right now it's just in a preview, and it's on iOS. And as you may recall, I recently switched to Android. So I've just kind of tested it. But... The one thing I did today was, it, I should say, by the way, it's fine. I, you know, there's been a lot of kind of nitpicky complaints about, you know, tab syncing isn't there yet or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a first preview. You know, to me, it, that's just like relax. It's happening. But, you know, I've got kind of an ongoing thing with Edge where I'd like, you know, I'd like to use Microsoft's browser on the desktop especially. And I was curious, you know, when this thing is complete, if this thing were feature complete, um, how would this meet my needs you know and i went back and I, because yeah. you know every version of windows 10 i look at edge and i kind of list out the stuff that still isn't right and there's still a bunch of stuff in the latest version unfortunately um and you know mobile is one of the big ones and so you know pwas is one of the big ones right and so that's something we know is happening in the next version of windows 10 mm -hmm. in the spring and i think if you look at the timing of this preview release that this is something that's going to be tied to that spring update to windows 10 that's coming in march or april um, it's a, it's a very early preview right now. The Android preview isn't even out yet. Um, there's no iPad version, by the way. I, I tested that last night. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, I'm glad they're testing it. I think it's smart. It's the right thing to do, but we're still six months ish away from this thing making a difference. And frankly, there are still so many other things about edge that aren't working for me that, um, we'll have to wait and see what they do, uh, in edge, edge for the desktop. Uh, for the next update. Yeah, and, and my um, lack of cognitive ability is very clearly one thing they told us is that password syncing is not yet working, right? And so Which I'm using Edge one of the, on my phone. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I'm using it. I'm like, oh, why I, can't I log into Thrive? Like, this is garbage. And so mm -hmm. like, I just stopped using it. But it's like, oh, wait, they told us that's coming. Um, I'll, I'll be curious I to see how the quickly thing, they yeah. update. I'll be quick, curious to see how quickly they update this stuff. It's already gotten one update on iOS already, by the way. Yeah. I, you know, uh, password, I would say, is crucial. Like, when you think about something like uh, uh, bookmark sync or whatever, favorite sync, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you, know you, you could do that one-time thing. If you wanted to use Chrome or Safari on your mobile device, you could do a sync on the desktop. Well, actually, not for Safari, yep. I guess. Uh, you could do a multi-stage sync. To <laughs> it's not a sync. It's actually more of a copy your settings over. So doing that to, to Safari would actually involve using Chrome first, then going to a Mac and using Chrome to get it into Safari. Uh, the long story. Anyway, the point is, um, I don't really change my bookmarks all that much. So honestly, that's not a big deal. But password sync is a huge deal, right? And that's kind of a big thing. And I do think that there's some benefit to the continue on PC functionality. And whether that takes the form of, you know, reading list, which is kind of a save it later, which now works mm -hmm. across mobile, which is nice. Or just the ability to say, hey, look, you know, I'm doing this thing on my Edge browser on one device. It doesn't matter if it's a Windows PC or an Android phone or whatever. I want to work on that on a different device. I think that stuff is pretty cool, too. So, um, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's fine. I think, it's, I think they're going to get it there. I think it's okay. Yeah. Actually, and I'll be curious to see if this is the same way for anybody else. Actually, after using Edge on my phone, I was like, man, maybe I should give it another try on the desktop. And actually, once the Fall Creators update comes out, I will do my semi-annual... Yeah. 
all right, we're going to use Edge for a week, and let, let's sure. see how this actually plays out. So, um, I have my suspicions curious. about how that's going to go. Yeah, and, and to be honest, the, the thing that's jumping out in my mind that's going to keep me from it is going to reside in the context menu when I right-click on things is what I'm worried about. Actually, that that is faster in the false creators update. Um, so are you getting at the well, speed it, of it or just the quality? No, 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 no. The, the options oh. inside of that. Because much like you, right, I write a lot. Yeah. And a lot of times you get a right-click, save images, right-click, open image in new tab, um, right-click, yeah. duplicate tab. Like I need these things in the workflow. And if those aren't there, I'm going to write a post. And I'll tell you what it's going to be called now. It's called The 10 Stupid Reasons Brad Can't Switch to uh, Edge. <laughs> Yeah, I have the same same thing. Yep. I mean, I use the developer tools in Chrome, which I find, you know, to make sense to me. I, I I think in some cases, depending on the site, depending on the way the page is constructed, you can in fact grab images out of there in the edge. Um, but I find mm -hmm. that to be nonsensical right now. And you know, I know it's a very specific thing. It's not mainstream. I get it. But for me, it's one of the like you, you know, ten stupid things that just like ugh, like I just can't use this thing. Yeah, I want to. Yep, I like the way it looks. I do. As do I. Actually, I very much like the way it looks. Um, yeah. And so. Yep. Um, Paul, how do you feel about arguing? Well, uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, Brad? I, um, we're we're going to continue in arguing. arguing? Uh, so oh. you'll see where this is going. So Intel, Paul, you wrote up, is bringing their eighth generation chips to the desktop. What does that mean? Mm -mm. That's a good question. And we really only have about 30 minutes, so I'm gonna have to cut to the chase. Um, Intel with this generation of uh, core processors has decided to combine chips that are rightfully associated with the previous gen, chips that we could mm -hmm. arguably say are in fact something that would be a new gen. And then hilariously, and this is my favorite part of the story, is in the future, they will drag in chips from what would have been the next gen after that and in, in still call them eighth generation Intel core processors. So, Really on the second stage of this release, the first stage involved what they call cabulaic refresh chips, basically quad core versions of the dual core mobile chips that they had, you know, from actually only nine months ago. They didn't launch that long ago. Um, limited availability, flagship PCs only, major PC makers only, um, very hard to find. The desktop chips that ship this week are represent a, a similar kind of performance boost uh, for people who are doing multi-threaded activities like you would be with video editing. So mm -hmm. uh, they went from Four, uh, four cores to six cores. And uh, for those types of workloads, like this is actually a fairly dramatic performance improvement. Sure. For, you know, desktop productivity work, it's 10%-ish. But for other people, you know, for people that have maybe workstation type needs or higher end needs, it's it's actually a pretty significant uh, advantage. So where does the argument fall here? Um, so what is the name of these chips? What's the, like the code name? Tabula, oh well, these ones are, are um, Coffee Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the stupid joke I said on Twitter? Why I can't use these chips? Because I don't, I don't drink coffee, and orange juice is better yeah. for you. And, and I, as I pointed out, orange juice is sugar and is in fact not good for you. It is as, um, in fact as bad for you as drinking Coke. So Paul, <laughs> yes, Paul, I'm, I'm going to take you down a trip uh, down memory lane, a trip lane, whatever you want to call it, called Health Isn't All About Me. Um, do you know what else is in okay. orange juice in abundant quantity? What else is in orange juice? Yep. Are you going to say something stupid like vitamin C? No, no, no. Uh, citric oh, okay. Acid. <laughs> Just citric acid. Okay. Citric yeah. acid. And you know, what citric, you know what citric acid is good for, Paul? <laughs> I no, uh, it's really good at breaking down. It's really, really good at breaking down kidney stones. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. you know, so, you need to figure out a way. I know you have this problem, right? From time to time, yeah. you have to pass something that's the size of an acorn. Okay, I, I see. I think I see where this is going. <laughs> um, I, I don't know anything about citric acid, but I would recommend finding yeah. some source of citric acid that's not tied to as much sugar as in Kool Aid. You know, that's <laughs> actually what I drink is it's a it's a naked juice. Is that's the brand. Yeah. Um, it's not yeah. even actually pure orange juice. It's like one quarter orange, like part banana. It's basically just a fruit conglomerate. But uh, it gives me the recommended citric acid that they are now recommending to avoid kidney stones. So 
anyways. I don't, I have not <laughs> experienced kidney stones, but I know from talking to you that it is not pleasant. Yeah, no, it's, it's not something, um, you, you really don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of things you don't really want to do, um, giving your mm. IP address to Raphael would probably be one of those things because he does. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's evil. Yeah. He's, not, he's, he is an evil genius. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with him, uh, his name is Rafael Riviera. He writes on Therat, and he is pretty close to the, like, if we were going to say who's the evil genius of the group, it would be Raf. Uh, he is yeah. quick with the fingers, even faster in the registry, I think would be his superhero tagline. But what he's actually figured out is in the latest skip ahead branch is that Cloud Clipboard that uh, originally, I believe, started life, at least in conceptually, as one, no, or one clip uh, five years ago is now mm -hmm. starting to show up in the core OS, and he was able to unlock some of those capabilities. But unfortunately, it doesn't work yet, because according to him, it is not tied into the Microsoft graph at this point. But at least the UI yeah. components are starting to show up. And so Raft doing yeah. what Raft does best. Yeah. Yeah, he did this before with um, some, I guess, fall creators update features, right, where you grab an early build and you look and you're like, actually, you know, uh, this stuff is kind of hidden in here. Remember he found the my yeah. people stuff uh, back in the day. I don't actually, that might've been creators update. I don't remember when that was, but um, he was able to just kind of shed light on that stuff before Microsoft was ready to release it. Yeah. That's kind of just what he does is uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> he's the coal miner, I think would also be another way or the scuba diver. Um, yeah, the because the last time there. I tried to do anything like this, I ended up destroying my machine and, uh, I, yep. I learned my lesson to just wait for Raf. <laughs> That's right. Yep. I don't even try. I could never do this. So Paul, uh, speaking of destroying your machines, if you work mm -hmm. in it, there's a very good chance you're working with anywhere from 50 to let's just say 50,000 computers, it shops range in size, but there's one thing that every it shop does and more than likely you regret doing it. It's uh, deploying images to new machines. It happens from ransomware, hard drives breaking down, you name it. But the folks here at Smart Deploy, they actually have a better solution. They've got a better way to deploy images to machines to make that to take that process from being the worst part of your week to quite honestly might be the best part of your week. Dare I say you might even enjoy it, but I can probably guess that you will no longer regret it. And they're actually putting their weight behind this product, as any good company would do. And they're giving away to Therat users 15 free licenses. And these aren't like you go grab the license and in two weeks uh, they're going to hit you up for a credit card once you're – nope, no, no, no. These are lifetime licenses for up to 15 machines. And you can go to smartdeploy.com slash Therat and grab those. Like I said, they're completely free, definitely worth trying out because these guys have taken the pain – out of deploying images for the corporate user. So go check them out. That's smartdeploy.com slash the rot. Yeah, buddy. Still with us, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Oh, gosh. You know, um, there's been a lot happening this week, specifically around Surface Brand. And I don't know if you caught this tweet, but Walking Cat, mm -hmm. who... I will dare say friend of the show, friend of the humans. Uh, he, he cryptically tweeted out a couple of days ago. He goes, I wonder if there's a 15 inch surface book coming. Yeah. Curious. Why, why mm -hmm. would he say that? Well, say let's that? just put it this way. Walking cat. Isn't somebody who just randomly tweets things. Uh, I've never yeah, seen him just kind like of wonder a, out loud. He's like so a Raphael. Type. That, yeah. No, he is, he's right. the Raphael who I don't know if he has a day job in any capacity, but that works out to our benefit because he is the one uh, spelunking, yeah. we'll just call him the web version of Raph. Raph is offline or on-premises, and Walking wow. Cat is the online cloud version okay. of, of that. But anyways, he, he cryptically tweeted out, he says, I wonder if there's a 15-inch Surface book coming. And so to me, that says he's found something that gives him a hint that either A, a new Surface Book is coming at some unannounced point in the future, or potentially, Paul, I don't know how much you love the 15 inch size. I know. Uh, I wonder so if take that's... your you've got a Surface Book there, right? So to, yep. if, if you don't mind, turn that thing around so we can see the front of it and look at the screen. Just to this see is going to be embarrassing. Is. You're going to find out I'm just looking oh, no, at okay. memes all day long. Yeah, yeah. So it's a kitten gifs. 
Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to sort of see if 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 that clipboard part there, a clip book or whatever they call it, would accommodate a 15 inch screen. And I guess not. So, in other words, close. It'd be close. Yeah, unless they went bezelless. But you know, you wouldn't be able to pick something like that up very easily, would you? As a as a tablet. But you know, but they, they could. I think work around that. But, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe. It would be it would be close. I, I was thinking the same that's thing what, too. Thirteen five, right? So that's that that looks like it could almost make it. Yeah, that's not, oh gosh. That, I'm trying to do the math. That's like a half quarter to a half inch, I think, diagonally mm -hmm. to get that mm -hmm. that which it could they could do it. it could do it. That would be yeah. that would be interesting. Because uh, you know the the problem with Surface Book is that it's a low volume device. It's an expensive device, and so. If you're going to make a second version of that, you know, you could make a much better case for a 15 inch version of the Surface laptop, right? That, that to me would make sure. tons of sense. Um, but maybe a 15 inch is a way to differentiate further from the Surface laptop, which has roughly the same size screen, not quite mm -hmm. the same resolution, but close enough. Um, and, and maybe that's the differentiator. You know, it's the, the Surface book becomes the big one or whatever. Um, so I've never heard anything about a new Surface book. I can't corroborate nor deny yeah that no, rumor. It, it the only reason i bring it up if anybody else had just tweeted hey what a 15 inch surface book yeah, would be like, awesome. yeah what about it what but if brad microsoft that, made something called the lumia 1050 xl well hold on yeah. stay with me yeah maybe yeah what yeah. if yep it's a fun what if but uh walking cat isn't really a what if person he's more like a what i see type person and then he regurgitates that uh, very helpfully out on his twitter account so yeah, like maybe he's seen something that suggests such a thing might exist, or it might be at least testing. Yeah, which would go completely against some of the uh, more click-friendly headlines you might call them. It says Surface is going away in 2018. Yeah, 2019. <laughs> um, please get your yeah. fake facts correct. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. Uh, we're we're all making things up these days anyway. So what's the difference? Um, oh, so I looked this one up, right? I, 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 look, I will say this. I mean, um, there, there's some weirdness from surface lately, right? They've been, they were kind of off, off schedule. There's been no explanation. Uh, mm -hmm. there's no surface event this fall, but the, he's going to appear the Panos that is, uh, in London. And it's like, you know, there, there are a lot of questions, right? And you can look across the product line and kind of say, well, they could do this. They could do this. We've talked about architectural changes to uh, Thunderbolt three and USB C and, you know, What's going on with these guys? Um, so, I, you know, there are questions. And, and obviously, you can also sort of surmise that um, Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, has been very aggressive about uh, business units justifying uh, them existing. You know, that you need to make money and make sense and provide customer benefit and so on. You can look at the PC business and say, hey, actually, there are a lot of PC makers now doing a great job in the premium PC, PC space. Lenovo, obviously, but, you know, HB, which is now the number one PC maker in the world, Dell. Acer, Asus, whoever you care to name, there's like a lot of good stuff going on there. Does Surface even need to exist? That's all that stuff is just a conversation, right? But when yep. someone from like Canalsys or whatever the name of the company is and an analyst, uh, a market analyst comes out and says, you know, I believe that Microsoft's going to cancel this thing in 2019, by the way, very specific date. You know, you kind of have to go look at that and 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 say, well, where, where did this come from? Like what's, what information is this based on? Does he have channel sources that have told him this? Is this based on insider information? And the answer is no. This guy has literally done like a psychological an analysis of Satya Nadella. And he says, using the reasoning that this guy uh, uses to make decisions, I believe that this is going to happen. I don't know where the date came from, but this is the kind of a date. So this yeah. little pronouncement was made at some like little industry event or little canalysis event or whatever. And uh, so the register, I think it was, went and asked, well, let's see what the other PC makers think. And here's the thing, Brad, this is hilarious. You know, PC makers are still really burned about Surface. They're really burned about Surface. Like, they I hate that Microsoft that. entered the PC market. I know. <laughs> um, Lenovo, notably, is the one that is still carrying a grudge. And we know this because Lenovo is the one PC maker that hasn't kind of gone along and, you know, done all the Microsofty things lately and, and joined the different initiatives. Like, everyone else has been kind of on board with the Microsoft stuff, but Lenovo, not so much. And so they got a guy from Lenovo. Granted, this was in Europe, so this could have been like nobody from Lenovo, but some guy from Lenovo who said, yeah, I think they're going to do the same thing. And um, I think that makes sense. They should leave the PC industry, you know, and it's like, 
not based on anything, just this guy's opinion, yeah. you know? And then they said, well, look, oh, this is going crazy. Let's ask someone else. And they asked a guy from Dell. And Adele was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, and so it became like Canalsys or whatever that company is. Lenovo and Dell all think Microsoft is going to leave the PC business. And it's like, um, that's not necessarily a story. Yeah. So look, um, the funny thing about this is because Microsoft is Microsoft and that things change all yep. the time, Microsoft could cancel service. They could do it tomorrow. They could do it in two years. They could do it in five years. This could happen. That doesn't mean that these guys were right. You know, they didn't, right. you know, it doesn't mean that they had some source that, that gave them the right information. This was just an opinion. Like we can all make little pronouncements about what we think is going to happen and then cherry pick our victories in the future when those things do happen. Um, but this is just baloney. Like it's not even a story. Now that said, while I'm yeah. talking, Microsoft is canceling the surface line, but you know, we'll have to see what happens. My biggest argument about why they won't, um, there's many, some people are like, oh, they cancel Groove, that's a consumer product, they'll cancel Surface. Here's the difference. <laughs> yep. um, you know, roughly speaking, and it's not every quarter, I know sometimes they have down quarters, but on some quarters, Surface does a billion dollars in revenue. Just revenue, doesn't matter, don't yep. care about net income at, at this point. Yep. It's very hard to get anything ever to make a billion dollars in revenue. It's much easier to take something that has a billion dollars in revenue and make it profitable than it is to take something that has no revenue and make it have a billion dollars in revenue. Like it's yeah, it's very hard to do that. And so those things aren't comparable uh, in any way, shape, or form. You gotta remember Microsoft kept Groove right. going for eleven years. Eleven years. Yep. You know? Um, that thing never made any money. Um, you're right. Uh, Surface is a billion dollar business. Uh, that's how we characterize those things. It is a billion dollar business. But more important, they have erected an incredible infrastructure to serve their most important customer base, which is enterprises. Yep. Surface is not something you go to Best Buy and buy, although maybe you could do that. Surface is something that businesses buy in bulk from resellers who have value on top of that with their own services and support systems and all kinds of other things. Um, this is not a, a small effort. You know, It's also more mm -hmm. of a sustainable effort than something like Microsoft's Windows Phone business, especially after they bought Lumia or the or Nokia, rather, because... You know, one of the things that they got sucked into was the old-fashioned way that Nokia did things with all their own employees working at their own factories, their own manufacturing facilities, their own design houses. Those guys all had major European-style um, wages and healthcare packages and benefits and all kinds of other stuff. The huge costs associated with this stuff. Um, you know, Microsoft is not directly manufacturing these things anymore, right? They're doing the things, they're right. doing Surface the way everyone does manufacturing these days. Um, so it's a more efficient... Uh, business as well. I'm not saying that overall, you know, what has it been? How many years has it been since say 2012? Yeah. Five years ish yeah, since great. they started surface. I don't mean to say like five years in it's profitable overall over the course of the five years. I mean, that's not really how any corporation measures anything anyway, but it is, it is by any measure a successful business. Yep. So, uh, speaking of successful business, Paul, when you wrote this today, you said, what a fool believes, and I just figured it was going to be a 1,000-word rift on my life. But, um, <laughs> just a picture of you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> maybe, maybe a gif of me and some cats while mm -hmm. you're explaining quantum computing. Just a picture of you disappointing your child. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, is this a fool me once, shame on me type thing about Microsoft services, I hope? Yeah, it's sort of, and and I wanted, you know, I hope it was obvious. I, the feedback that I've seen so far has been positive, and that's good. Um, I, you know, someone on uh, Twitter yesterday sort of said, you know, it seems like you're mocking your fans, you know, when you say that you guys never learn with these Microsoft consumer things. I, I know I don't intend it that way, um, and I I want to be I wanted to be clear in this article at least um, that I, I sort of lump myself into this category, you know the the I want to believe category, right? Um, mm -hmm. Microsoft has been very successful on the commercial side, uh, which commercial meaning business plus government plus education, you know, the businesses and things that are like businesses. Um, honestly, with, you know, with some rare exceptions, I mean, obviously Xbox might fall into this category, um, not so much on the consumer side. And as I just said about Groove, you know, the, the, there's a growing discontent among the fan base about the stuff and how Microsoft all, always seems to cancel people's favorite projects or products or whatever. Um, yeah, okay. Again, there are always exceptions. Uh, Microsoft Band is a great one because it was only around for a couple of years. But most of the things that people really complain about the most, Zune, uh, Music Pass, um, 
you know, media center, <laughs> home server, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Pick your favorites. Um, those things were all around for a long time, actually. If you really go and look at it, and it, like I said, in the case of Groove Music Pass, that thing Microsoft kept that thing going for eleven years. Um, that's crazy. Like I, that thing was yeah. a waste of time and money from day one. Like it was pointless. So, I, you know, I'm kind of a, a mixed mind. Like I feel like Microsoft does actually really try, and I, I feel like they f they believe internally. If we build it, they will come. Meaning the customer base that are there's all these arguments you can make that make sense, like they seem to make sense. Our business customers are people. People go home and they use personal technology. If they have a good experience with Microsoft products at work, they will come home and they will use Microsoft products at home. Yeah, it makes sense. It doesn't happen. It really doesn't happen. And the way the world has evolved, you know, the PC has become a tool for work. It's not where we do everything any, anymore. We do the fun stuff uh, on phones and tablets sometimes. Uh, we don't, most people don't do that stuff on PCs. And it's, it's it's kind of made the thing that Microsoft can take advantage of super uninteresting to most people on the client, right? Microsoft has huge advantages up in the cloud and on-prem servers and so forth um, where they get that virtuous cycle. Um, they don't really get it on on client in personal computing. And it's, you know, it's too bad. I mean, I, I think they make good stuff and I, I know they keep trying, but I think at some point you just got to be honest about it. It's like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be buying movies from Microsoft's service, you know? Maybe that thing's going to disappear. Mm-hmm. You know, just common sense. Yeah, the one thing that somebody did point about, because I know obviously the next thing on the chopping block most people think is movies and TV, is what do they do with the Xbox then? Because that's like the one, only place right now you can buy that type of content yeah. on an Xbox. Okay, so, so I have a theory, and, and, and this will be like the speculation from the guy from Canalsis or whatever that company is, right? Mm -hmm. But except that I'm going to be clear that it was speculation. Um, Microsoft just got rid of Groove when Spotify came to the Windows Store, right? right? Spotify is an app you can get on Xbox and on Windows. So that kind mm -hmm. of solved the problem, right? It's fair to say that music services are less sticky than movie purchases, right? Um, because right. people have these libraries of content. You know, it's, it's easy to move someone to a new service. It's easy for you to move yourself to a new service um, for music. Movies are difficult. Because you may have bought a bunch of content. I've heard from people on Twitter who say, and I, I put it over there because that's what Twitter is. Um, I, I, I've had people on Twitter <laughs> tell me that they purchase like hundreds of movies from the Microsoft service, which like even now it gives me like a little chili up the back um, that someone would ever do that. It's terrible. So that's a little more complicated of a process. I would say there are one or two things that Microsoft could do to end movies and TV. The first would just say, look, we're just getting rid of it. We're going to let you continue access. The, the, the app continues just like Groove does. If you bought something from us, we'll support that. But you can still use it mm -hmm. um, you know, for 10 years or some amount of time. right? Maybe it, it might not be indefinite, but Microsoft for now will allow you to keep streaming it, download it, play it offline, whatever. But I think the better approach, and this is where things get really complex, is for a third party to come to the store and offer their movie and TV service on Windows and on the Xbox, right? Yep. And for Microsoft to strike a deal with them where they say, look, could you please allow our customers who have bought content to have that content in your store now? Um, I'm completely making this up. But it is interesting and coincidental that the other big um, Centennial app on the consumer side that's coming soon to the store is iTunes. And iTunes has a movie and TV store. And you never know. You know, The other possibility that's uh, kind of obvious is Amazon. Amazon has this mm -hmm. stuff, but they don't have it in the Windows Store. They've never supported the Windows Store in any meaningful way. In fact, the only reason an ebook store exists in Edge right now is because they don't have a good Kindle app. Well, maybe. You know, again, maybe. I'm just I'm inventing stuff here. I want to be clear about that. But, you know, Amazon could solve this problem for Microsoft too. Because there's a lot of good streaming services on the Xbox. Um, I, I think you're right. I don't know that there is another place to buy content on the right. Xbox for movies, I, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but that would solve the problem, though. Yeah, we will see. Um, it's, yeah. It was just an interesting observation. Somebody said, you know, yep. then they would have to solve that problem. Of course, Microsoft problem. on the backside also has the metrics about how many people are actually downloading movies and TV from mm -hmm. the Xbox dashboard right now. And I can guarantee you that if it's a very marginal amount, I could see them also just, just whacking it off. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know, yeah. letting you, I mean, you could give people point. partial refunds. You could, yeah. there's all kinds of ways 
for this to kind of go away. But it's going to be, I think, you know, look, the reaction to Groove, I got to say, was way worse than I thought it was going to be. It really was. Same. We had gone, we've gone through Windows Phone. Well, we sort of have. Like, seriously, every single day of my life, I hear from someone who seems particularly clueless about the fact that Windows Phone is dead, but uh, they insist their 950 XL is a perfectly fine phone and they would never use an Android. But, okay, fine, whatever. But we've pretty much gone through that tsunami of heart. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, Groove compared to Windows Phone to me is like nothing. Like, how could this be nearly as bad? And yet this right. week has been horrific. Like the backlash from what I would call the community, you know, these, this Windows fan base or Microsoft fan base has been way more negative than I could have ever imagined. Um, not that I expect most normal people to kind of say, you know, it's really nice Microsoft to support this stupid service for as long as they did it. You know, you can see they didn't make any money and it didn't make any sense, but at least they did it and good for them. Um, but <laughs> the reaction we did get was even, in some ways, even crazier. So movies and TV, again, I can't imagine there are that many people using it, but I have to think it's going to be the apocalypse for some people if that ever yeah, happens. Yeah, because that's purchase content as opposed to, for the most part, streaming content. So, uh, Yeah, it's, yes, that's, um, I might have to take that week off. <laughs> uh, yeah it's not well, going to be good uh, i can only i can only hope because that would make my life better <laughs> okay so uh before before we get to the follow-up friday uh alan Al alaman uh, asked in the comments he said did the surface survive brad's daughter test um if you're not familiar with the, what that sentence means uh, i highly <laughs> recommend you go watch the behind the scenes video of where paul and i did probably the most rugged surface lapability testing ever uh, at Disney World. And unfortunately, yeah. that final test um, didn't end up so well for the surface. Paul, technically yeah. it did work, but... Did it? Uh, I mean, I feel like it I would mean, have it, worked eventually unless the water was treated. I don't mean to give away too much. But, um, yeah... yeah. To be clear, we it turned on. We probably should have had like a we should have had like a little message at the end of the video that says no surfaces were harmed in the making of this video. But the truth is, they were kind of kicked one around. Yeah, yeah. But you know, to be, also to be fair, it was a um, it was a Surface Three. So yes, um, to all those yes. thinking we trashed a brand new Surface Pro, uh, we're yeah. dumb, yeah. but we're not that dumb. Yeah, we we're idiots, but we're not. Yeah, we're not off the charts, idiots. <laughs> there is there is a lower bound to how dumb we are. Uh, with right. that, we're going to do some follow-up Friday here, which is basically where we go back and look at a lot of the comments. Um, actually, we had one of the highest commented posts uh, this week when Groove was killed. Over 200 comments and a lot of good stuff no in way. there. But, but, but first, uh, oh, Harm right. Jr. said on Edge coming to Android and iOS, he says, I wish Microsoft would release a Windows 10 mobile theme for the Android UI. I don't... That's an interesting idea but if i don't think they could bring live tiles to android unless they did it in the widget right. form factor I, I sort of walked through this um some time ago i don't know it could have been a year ago it could have been two years ago i sort of thought about the same thing and i think the issue there is you need to have some way to populate the live tiles with information that's consistent right that you you yeah. know, the reason it worked on Windows Mobile is that it's a platform feature, right? So every app natively supports this, and uh, to some degree, you know, you can have different size tiles, different amounts of live data, the ability to, for the user to turn it off and everything. And I think it would just be one of those things where it would work pretty well for some apps, and it would not work at all for others. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the thing for that person and whoever else to look at that's interested in this kind of thing is the Microsoft launcher that they just released in. Yep. preview beta forum. It's a preview and it's a beta. Um, uh, someone explain, from, Someone from Microsoft actually explained to me why it's a preview and a beta, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, um, this is perhaps a more modern look at how Microsoft wants to do some of the integration bits that they tried first with Windows Phone. So for example, one of the things you can do on their launcher, which is like their replacement for the Android home screen, is pin your contacts individually to the home screen, right? And so if I call Brad a lot on the phone or if I call my wife a lot on the phone, I can actually have like a little icon of their little face, you know, depending on how they configure it. And I can determine what happens when I tap on it. So for example, I actually did do this. So for, I think for Brad, when I tap on Brad's face, what comes up is a choice of SMS or phone 
And for my wife, it just dials her phone number, like her mobile phone number. Um, and I just did that for testing purposes to kind of see how it works. But that's kind of a people-centric UI, right? It's something that Microsoft mm -hmm. is still pushing in Windows 10 now with the My People feature and the Fall Creators update. But it was kind of a core precept of uh, Windows Phone back in the day. And so, you know, yep. it's 2017 now, right? And so it's six years later, whatever, uh, seven years later, whatever it was. Um, you know, things have evolved. And so I would, you know, rather than duplicate something you like from the past, it's like, I'd like to see the Zoom UI on an iPod. Yeah, okay, maybe. But, you know... Um, that might be a more modern way of achieving some of the same ends that they were trying to achieve back then. Yep. Uh, next comment, which uh, this one actually had me laughing pretty loud, comes from <laughs> Egab, and it's on the Groove is Cancelled. It says, I'm starting to realize I'm a victim of abusive behavior. Let's just make it yep. simple and cancel all non-Azure products. <laughs> That's funny. I um, One of my earliest kind of insights like this about Microsoft. This is way back in the day. This is a long, long time ago. In fact, this happened when, when this happened, Microsoft did still kind of run the personal computing industry. Um, mm -hmm. I complained about something that we today see a lot in the Apple world, which is that people just kind of bow down before this company and love everything they do and they accept kind of abuse. And it's like, guys, you know, you, you don't understand the relationship here. You're the customer. You're the yeah. one who gets the say. If, if they aren't doing what you like, you complain, and if they don't fix it, you leave. Like, right. you are the one who has the power. Um, you know, the problem for that kind of stuff with Microsoft is that um, that you that group of yous, of uses, mm -hmm. is comparatively small compared to their enterprise customers. And so, unfortunately, right. um, when you make that kind of hard decision on Microsoft's case, they're going to make it, you know, in the way that makes the most sense for them, which is, unfortunately, to lean toward their enterprise customers. But, yeah, you know... I, we, we don't, well, I don't know, maybe we have a little bit still, but we don't really see that as much as you see in the Apple world today. But yeah, I think it's important to understand the nature of the relationship you have with these companies that you're, by the way, paying. Yep, you know? yep. it's your money. That's the best way to speak yep. is with your money. And if you don't yep. want your money, I'm happy to take it for you. <laughs> yes, I, would, really? I will spend it on your behalf. I will buy a lovely <laughs> new Surface laptop with it. Yes. You got anything else going on today, Paul? <laughs> this weekend for even that matter uh, no next week's gonna be another busy week we, you know we're going to new york as you know but i might as well just tell the world we're going to new york for a couple of days and then when we get back i'm going to boston to visit friends uh, for a, kind of a long weekend but this weekend no i'm gonna do normal work stuff i got a lot to catch up on still so i'll be around mm. how about you uh, actually my wife is running a half marathon tomorrow so she's yes. gonna run 13.1 miles and my daughter and I are going to stand on various places of the course and scream obscenities mm -hmm. sure. at her for making. No, 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 no. She's going to make us get up early, so we're going to be angry. Um, you should um, give your daughter like a glass of water and then misinform her about how she's supposed to deliver it. <laughs> she is good with directions about how to handle water. Uh, yes. That is, uh, yeah, I, I think that's really about it. I hope. I don't. Let's I, go. I, I, well, I wish hope her that Sunday is good, good for football. Her. Yeah, and I hope that that football is as good as Thursday night's football, which was, um, whew, you know, technically a game of some kind. Yes, te technically a game. Technically a game. Ah, already. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Today's show was brought to you by Smart Deploy IT tools to manage Windows computers pretty much made easier. And you can find that at smartdeploy.com slash therat. And as always, thanks for tuning in. We do this Monday through Friday, and we will catch you right back here next week on First Ring Daily.